Hello, uh, Fear the Meerkat here. Welcome to another episode of Let's Pray. This game, whatever it's called, Burn House uh, Lane. Okay. Um why? Uh Where are you? Please don't tell me this thing is you, because honestly, if it is, I think you could have survived Destiny attacking you. Whatever the heck you are. Um Probably, yes, given all of the stuff that's happened so far. Hmm. Hmm. Hope this isn't the woman we were talking to earlier. Alright, well... I mean, there doesn't really seem to be anything else to do, except burn the body, so... Oh, okay, well that's what this is for. I don't know how she got in here and swallowed this, but okay. So wait, um, shouldn't have said that. Uh, I was hoping this would have done something. Oh, right. Uh, obviously I did that wrong. Let's try this again. Ah, uh, I didn't actually turn on the gas. Okay. Sorry about that. Alright. Uh, guess I'm going to have to wait. Yeah. Do that thing's done. Uh, I don't like this. The amount of gas in here is not good. Perhaps it would be a good idea for me to... <coughs> Yeah, it looks like it's too late. Okay, well, the good news is since it wasn't given me the option to use the door, um, I am hoping that that isn't a uh, game over. Alright, good. At least it looks like it's not a game over. Yes, this is a dream. Hello? Hi, my name's Beth and I'm calling from Hopedale Medical Clinic. Am I talking to Angie Weather? Yes. Okay, that's great. Um, you came to us last week to run some tests. The results are in and... Are they okay? Dr. Matthews asked if you could come in. He'll explain everything. Wait, is something wrong? Am I ill? We don't give out this kind of information over the phone, I'm afraid. Let's arrange a visit, shall we? Alright, well if they're not giving this information over the phone, 
that means, yeah, the results are not good. Can you make it this afternoon? Sorry, can you repeat? I can't hear you very well. I said... I want to help you. Draw an X on the door and come to me. What? I want to take a closer look. Wait a second. Wow. Well, that's that, I guess. And now I can get out again. Yes. I think you might actually have a chance. I have a good feeling about you. It's your voice I heard on the phone, isn't it? Who are you? As you can see, I'm a cat. I used to have a lovely warm home, but one day, Andrea got sick. She came to Burnhouse Lane. I followed her, and I stayed. Where else can I go? Who's Andrea? She was my friend, of course. A long time ago, we both died in that fire, but I simply refused to accept it. Why am I here? This is where the sick come to die. Where else would you be? Are you sick too? No. I shouldn't really be here. But cats never obey the rules. Instead, sometimes I try to help poor souls like you. Because I know how to cure your cancer. This rotten sickness, slowly killing you from the inside. I can give you a fresh start. If you're willing to work for it, of course. There's no cure. There's nothing they can do. But there is something you can do, Angie. The cure's inside you. You just need to reach in and find it. But it will not be given easily. You must prove something to me first. Prove it to yourself. I really like the cat's voice, but I have no particular reason to trust the cat. I'll do it. On the other hand, um, <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> um, yeah. Just tell me how. I'll give you five tasks. Complete them all, and you will live. First task is to bring an evil man here to Burnhouse Lane. You're going to meet him very soon. Don't let him lull you into a false sense of security, but make him follow you here instead. He won't come willingly, of course. So use the chalk you found to draw an X on the door. 
It'll take him straight to Burnhouse Lane if he walks through it. Here he will pay for his evil deeds. Go back now. A new day is coming. This task sounds like it's going to be harder than it sounds. But... We'll meet again soon. But now, take the door. Go back. I believe old George will need your help. Oh, okay. I'm quite glad that we that we go get to go back there. just be that the cat wants you to do what you're told and then it's going to give you nothing in return. Ah, okay, yes, that does sound useful. Cat powers. That does sound pretty cool, actually. Now, I mean, if there were the real powers of, of cats, um, like, I, I think being able to, like, jump where a cat does, for example, would be pretty cool. Um, I don't know if I should go in or not. I would much rather knock. George? Ah, alright, well, perhaps going in was a good idea. I hope he hasn't decided to wander around in the rain. Hopefully he's just gone to watch TV. I'd be cool with that. Now I have to remember where the front door was. Was that the phone? I don't know. You're not George. Morning, dear. Looking for Joyce. Joyce! I need to talk to her rather urgently. Is she around? Sorry, but did you just let yourself in? Well, I've been ringing the bell for quite some time. No one answered the door. That's not quite the point. <sighs> I am a man of God, and God needs no invitation. Besides, George knows me well, and so does So George. you say. And speaking of Joyce, where is she? I have a little business to discuss with her. Well, she's clearly not here, is she? But 
She's always here, looking after old George. How else would he manage the way he is these days? Oh, that Joyce, the caretaker. Yes, that's the one. Where is she? I don't trust you, so... I'm sorry, but I don't know you. It's best that you get in touch with George's daughter, Sarah. She'll tell you all about it. But why? Uh, something happened? Listen. I'm Father Rob Collins, a long-time family friend and a pillar of this community. And I think I have a right to know. Well, all I can say is that my name's Angie, and I'm an agency nurse covering for Joyce during her absence. Oh, well that makes sense, but... Hmm. How long will you be here for? Just a few weeks. Few weeks? What do I do? What do I... Ah. This is no good at all. That's not my problem. I mean... If you want to talk about it with me, I'm fine with that, but... <sighs> Alright, well, I don't know whether to be polite and, and be a good host, or... or what, here. Yeah. <sighs> Do you want a cup of coffee? Coffee? No, I don't want no bloody coffee. Okay, only asking. This is just dreadful. This house has fallen on hard times indeed. My, what would they have offered you before? Champagne? What did you want from Joyce? It's... I'm afraid I'm not allowed to talk about it. I'm sure you understand that what's said in the confessional stays in the confessional. Hmm. All right, well, I have an option to use this now. And I'm inclined to do so. I mean, I don't know for 100% sure that this is the evil man in question, but... I definitely do not trust this guy. Hmm. I don't want to... I don't want to waste this though. It might turn out like that this is going to be important later. Ugh. <sighs> Well, I suppose I've got this saved. But go on. I won't tell anyone. Well, in that case... Okay. I... I just wanted to buy some of those special herbs from her. She's been growing them underground in her secret place. She wouldn't show me where... Only she knows. Oh. Okay, I get it. You're looking to buy some pot. Uh, sorry, just felt a little dizzy. My head's all funny. Take a deep breath, and you'll be fine. What? Trust me, I'm a nurse. I, um... What were we talking about? Hmm. Morning, nurse. Morning, father. What? Another one? Who are you and how did you get in? Not only that, but this person must have got an in through the back entrance having jumped over the wall. Or how else would they get in from that door? That's just Kieran. Don't mind him. He lives on the farm and does the sheep. Quite literally, I've heard people say. Don't listen to that fool, nurse. He just likes to bully people, he does. Well, you're Welsh, right? And I've seen you around sheep. 
I'm a bloody shepherd. Of course I'm around sheep. He look after them. These poor creatures look absolutely terrified every time you get near them. That's exactly what I thought last time I came to your Sunday Mass, Father. And when was that, Kieran? Ten years ago? Twenty? Stop bickering, you two. What did you want, Kieran? Well, I was on my way to the sheep pen to feed my sheep, not do anything horrible, right? So I'm walking through the east yard towards the house. I'm not too happy, because it's absolutely pissing with rain out there, and I can already feel I have water in my boots. But then guess what I see? Poor old George is sitting right on top of the barn. I called out to him, I said, come on down mate, you're gonna fall. But he just blanked me. So I thought, I, oh, I can't deal with this. Because really, I, I'm just here to look after the sheep. <laughs> Crazy old people are way above my pay grade. Shit. Isn't it your responsibility to keep an eye on George at all times, no? Hmm. I think it's your responsibility to shut your face and leave. But, I'll tell you what. The, um, the, the previous nurse, the one who sells you drugs, always used to put an axe on the door, the lateral drug supply. <laughs> um, I could lead you there. If we want. Lead me to the barn, Kieran. I'll deal with this. Let's all go. By the sound of it, this situation may call for some divine intervention. Well, I'm not happy about you staying in this house, so... Sure. Well, shouldn't we be going through the... Front door? Barns through here, people. Barns definitely through here. I think. through here. I guess it's through here. I suppose Kerwin is likely to know where the barn is. Bloody rain. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. What is your house founded on? Up there. Yeah. Fuck. That's all I'm putting it. Sorry. But why would he go up there? Why don't you tell us? You're the caretaker. George! Come down for goodness sake! See? Nobody listens to you, mate. And neither does George. He probably can't hear me from up there. Are you any good at climbing, Kieran? Oh no! I ain't going up there, nurse. I'm sorry. The planks are all rotten through. And those ladders? Well, they weren't built for a man of my stature. Oh, your weight. Can you just bugger off? I don't even eat much. I got a fat gene from my mother. That makes my agility a wee low. So what? Oh, I've seen you. 
just dancing at a village fest. No fat gene hindering you there. Fine. Last thing we need is you getting stuck on the roof as well. Father Rob, any ideas? I wish the Almighty gave us angels' wings at times like this. But since he doesn't, I think I'll resort to the next best thing. Which is? I'll pray for his safety, dear. Oh, well, that's practical. I guess it's better than nothing. You're both useless. You could have gotten from Good. the start. That's what Joyce would do. Be careful up there. Seriously, you could have just done this from the start. Alright. Oh, <sighs> oh, uh... Hey, lady! You're trying to kill me! No, just you herself. This metal rod almost impaled me. Honestly, most jobs don't ask you to do something like this. Surely this is above and beyond the Call of Duty. Um, it doesn't look like I can do very much there. Alright, there must be an item. I have something here. Help. Oh, I don't have my items. Fair enough. I'll have to... I don't know. This episode might go on longer than the others. I'm gonna have to look for something to open it. Now, he mentioned something about a steel rod. So I can use that to open it. It was this close! Alright. I'm hoping that this is going to turn out to be useful. I don't actually know. Can you please give us a word of warning before you start dropping heavy objects from up there? I mean, it's a close one this time. Sorry. Mind your heads down there. It's about to rain potatoes. It's a plague of potatoes. Ouch! Stay there, George, please. I could really do with you staying there. Nice view, hmm? You can see for miles from up here. Hi.
Do you mind if I sit down with you? Too sure. You'll get a wet bum. Yeah. But I think... I think it might be best to do this gently. I don't want to upset him. Because if he gets up upset, he's going to fall. It doesn't matter. I'm soaked through already. Tell me a story, George. You don't want to hear it. Yes, I do. Tell me about your life here. What was it like? Well... I've had a very good life on this farm, but uh, it took me a while to realise that. But when I was young, I wanted to go out there and see the America that I knew from the movies. See the wild west for myself. But I never did. It used to be my father's farm, and when he passed away, he left it to me. He was an angry man. Always shouted at people. Anyway, I was convinced I'd follow in his footsteps and live a, a mediocre life I never wanted. Until something happened. It was the 4th of September, two years after Dad had passed away. I was on my tractor, heading up the hill to mend the fence, when I heard a crash. I stopped, suddenly. I got off and I saw this bicycle all crumpled up, sticking out right from under the tractor's front wheel. And I saw a lady's foot. I had no idea at the time that six months later we would marry that foot and its owner and that it would be the love of my life. Penny was her name. She was a new vet in town and the most gorgeous woman I'd ever laid eyes on. I picked her up in my arms, my heart racing, ready to rush her into hospital. But she just smiled and said, are you George Taylor, or are you, you have a sheep that's poorly? <laughs> Would you believe she was more concerned about the sheep than herself? Bless her, she really loved animals more than anything. Luckily, she wasn't nearly as damaged as her bicycle. Just a couple of scratches and a sprained ankle, which was quite extraordinary, considering she'd been hit by a bloody tractor. We waited for her, with a bouquet of flowers in my right hand, <laughs> and a box of chocolates in my left, right outside the hospital. We both knew that this was meant to be. My lovely darling Penny. <sighs> I tell you, she turned my life upside down. The farm that I despised so much finally became a home. All of a sudden I couldn't care less about Wild West and the cowboys. Penny opened a veterinary clinic here. Then Sarah was born and we started a family. Life was good. But good lives don't last forever. They're always followed by the dark times. There was an accident one day. We had a lot more horses here back then. There was this one bad stallion, Derek he was called, nasty old thing. He had jumped and kicked Penny suddenly while she were giving it injections. And she just flew and hit her head on the way. She didn't die straight away. I was in the hospital with her for three days, watching the life in her slowly drain away. She was only 42. That's too young to go. Too young. But hey, look at me rambling on. Oh, I didn't mean to bore you with my old man's stories. See you back at the house, See you back at the house dear. Oh. Okay. 
<laughs> well, that's that problem sorted. <laughs> <laughs> It'll warm you up, George. You'll be all right. Of course he'll be all right. He's a tough bloke. He wrestled bears and punched wolves back in his days. Isn't that right, George? Oh, we don't know about the bears, Kieran. Why are you here, Kieran? What do you mean? I live here. <laughs> Not in this house, you don't. But I've known George for a long time. We're all pals. He doesn't mind. You don't mind, do you, George? Oh, I don't mind, Kieran. Mm. Well, if George doesn't mind. Then neither do I, I guess. It's a sheep that bothers you can me. Stay. That sheep looks evil. As long as you don't sneak up on people or like murder me. I won't murder you. Nah. Too much trouble getting rid of the body. <laughs> Besides, let's just be friends for George's sake. I'm not looking for enemies. I tell you what, I'll cook dinner for everyone first, and then we'll shoot some bottles. How about that? Oh, so you can cook too? Hell yeah, I can. I make a smash and roast lamb with Brussels sprouts and mint sauce and all. George loves it, but there's no oven in my caravan, so we'd have to cook here. I don't know, Kieran. I think we could all use a proper meal after a morning like this. But I I'm going to need some cooking wine. I doubt there's any here. George has always been a sherry kind of guy. Someone say sherry? There's a bottle of red in my caravan. Could you get it for me, please? Why can't you get it yourself? A dinner like this is a lot of work. I'll never make it on time if I don't get started on the vegetables straight away. Plus, ah, the old leg's hurting, like a son of a bitch. And you'll be walking that way anyway. Joyce always does, this time of day. To do what? To feed Richard some carrots. Richard? The horse. He lives in the box just outside the big barn. Hmm. You know, you probably shouldn't talk about uh, cooking a roast lamb. Um, next to the sheep. You know. I, I don't know why I would give him the kebab. I'll go then. Anything else I should do while I'm there? Milk the cows? Harvest the crops? No. Just get the wine and give Richard some carrots so he can love you forever. Okay. But you better watch George while I'm gone. I won't let him out of my sight, nurse. Before I do that, I... What are you even doing here? Are you deaf? That man's going to turn you into dinner. Run! Oh, we're not eating, Midge. There's lamb meat in the freezer, Good. silly. Oh, right. Then I guess you can relax, Midge. Just don't look in the freezer. But first, I need to save the game, because this has been going on for a while. Also, I don't know where I'd get carrots from. Hmm. Okay, I guess you can't change them to dry clothes, never mind. Alright, so that's the end of this episode. I will see you next time.